Lava. Today we're investigating this delicious beverage that many of us believe to be healthy. But is it really? keeps a doctor away. Carrots help you to see in the dark. Packed full of antioxidants and potential cancer-fighting nutrients, we all know that we should be eating more fruit and vegetables. But with today's busy lifestyles, could fruit drinks be the quick and convenient answer? Or are these sweet, colorful delights packed full of harmful chemicals and sugar? Join me this week as we squeeze the truth out of fruit drinks. investigating something that a lot of us love and that's fruit juice. Let's face it, in the tropics it gets really hot and sticky and humid and there's nothing quite like a refreshing juice to kind of quench that thirst. And we're really spoiled for choice. You can get lots of varieties of fruit and veg. But today I want to try something a little bit different. Something that you can hardly get around here and that's cactus juice. Uncle, let's try one of these. Cactus juice. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. The moment of truth, it's the taste test. Mmm. It's got quite a kick to it. There's some spice there and it's a little bit bitter. What else do you put in here, Uncle? This I put your five things. Uh, pineapple, celery, pepper, lemon, cactus. Delicious. Thank you, Uncle. So, what is the difference between a fruit juice and a fruit juice drink? Let's find out. A fruit juice, as the term implies, is that you've taken an apple, macerated it to extract the juice, and you have filtered all the residue, and that's exactly what a fruit juice is. 100% from a fruit, nothing added, nothing taken away, except the, the fiber. A fruit juice drink is a drink that contains 30%, up to about 50%, no more, of fruit juice added sugar and sometimes flavour and obviously water to make it taste like a fruit juice, but it's not 100% fruit juice. It's a fruit juice drink. Fruit cordial is concentrated fruit juice with added sugar syrup and some preservatives so that when you take it home, you can add it into a glass in small amounts and dilute it up with water so that you can make it back into a simulated fruit drink. Usually when you go to a hawker centre, they can either blend or juice the drinks for you. So basically, juicing is where they extract the water and the nutrients from the produce and discard the indigestible fibre. But unlike juicing, blending actually uses the entire fruit, including the skin, so that keeps the fibre nice and intact. And now there's even a cold-pressed juicer. And to be honest, I like them all. I don't discriminate, but I want to know, does it really make a difference? When you blend fruits, you actually retain the fibre because the fibre and the juice still remains in the container that it's blended in. For juicing, the juice extractor separates the juice from the fibre. That means that what you're drinking is only the juice. Therefore, the pro of blending is that you actually retain the fibre together with the juice and the fibre is where all the nutrients are. Some blenders and juicers are said to be nutrient and enzyme killers. And in recent years, cold presses have been getting some good reviews because they're said to produce a superior juice compared to their centrifugal counterparts. However, they can also be a bit more expensive. So are they worth it? Some of the cold press claim to actually use a pressure press to completely crush the fruit intact. I personally do not think that they make a major difference because if you think about it, there's hardly any heat being expressed in any of these products. And therefore, heat is the major destructor of vitamins. So therefore, there is hardly much difference qualitatively between a hundred buck blender or a juicer and a thousand buck gold presser. More often than not, fresh juices tend to be more expensive than the packed ones. I try my best to get my fruit juice fresh, or I try to eat the whole piece of fruit, but sometimes I get lazy. I'm guilty of that. I'm not always going to be near a fruit stall, so I tend to get a lot of my vitamins out of a carton. Now, I'm a food detective, and I don't take my investigations lightly. 
When I want to know details, I go straight to the source. And that's why I'm here at the Polka Factory, where they produce over 20 different types of fruit juices and fruit drinks. Now that's among the 120 varieties of beverages that they create here. So I've definitely come to the right place to get clued in. Let's get cracking. So the first thing I'm noticing is one, it's very hot. And two, it's very noisy. Yes. Why is it so hot? Why? Because you're standing next to a pasteurizer. Okay, run that by me. What is a pasteurizer? Okay, this is an equipment where the fruit juices are being processed and made safe for human consumption. Okay, so why is it so important to pasteurize your juice? Okay, for fruit juices, if you don't pasteurize it, you will get spoiled very quickly. Pasteurization. We see it on cartons all the time, but is it really necessary? Fruit juices that you see in the supermarkets are pasteurized to get rid of some of the potential bacteria that can actually cause you harm. So pasteurization is a very simple process where you heat the juice to about 70 to 75 degrees for a few seconds so that it kills some of the bacteria. How are the nutrients affected by the high temperature? Well, because the time that of contact at this high temperature is very short, so the damage to the nutrients are minimum. According to Nielsen, two-thirds of consumers in Singapore said they don't fully understand food labeling. With all of the nutritional information at our fingertips, surely we can't go wrong. If only we knew what it all meant. Well, I'm here to help. A serving size is 250 ml, or one glass. When you drink more than a glass, you have to multiply your calories and sugar accordingly. A lengthy ingredient list is a clue that a product isn't 100% fruit juice, but a fruit juice drink. All ingredients are listed in descending order by weight, which means that if fruit is at the end of the list, then there really isn't that much fruit in there. If water was added to make the juice, which is the case for fruit drinks from concentrate, it will likely be the first ingredient. Even if a product provides 100% of your daily vitamin C needs, that does not make it 100% fruit juice. Similarly, it's important to note that even with no added sugar, some contain artificial sweeteners and colorings. There are more than 50 names for sugar. If you're diabetic or watching your sugar intake, then it's always best to do your research and check the label. Now, back to business and time to put one of our favorite flavored drinks to the test. So I'm about to try an experiment with six little friends. I'm going to give them each three different apple drinks. The first one is 100% pure organic apple juice. Very, very good for you. The second one is just an apple drink, and that's got quite a bit of sugar and some additives in there. The third one is the Big Kahuna. It is a sparkling apple drink, and that one's got quite a lot of sugar in it. So I'm curious, which one of these drinks will they like the best? What do kids prefer nowadays? Let's have a look. Which one is apple juice? Two. Two. And this, what is this? What is this? Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. <laughs> what is this one? Yeah. Apple juice. And this one? Pineapple juice. And this one? Don't know. <laughs> Think about the taste of the three drinks and tell me your favorite. Mom. None. Have it. Thank you guys for doing this for me, for being such good sports. On the count of one, two, three, everyone says, we're done! One, two, three, we're done! Well, that was unexpected and very different. Two of the kids had adverse reactions to all three drinks. They didn't want to make a decision. And what's really interesting is that all of them thought that the apple drink was really apple juice. None of them recognized the taste of 100% apple juice. Coming up, the shocking truth behind food coloring. Some children are genetically predisposed to behavioral changes. Back 
to the polka factory to squeeze out more juicy facts. So this looks to me like the exciting part of everything because you see everything going around. Yeah, so what are you making today? Today, uh, we are making Kyoho grapes. It is a new species of uh, grape that is recently introduced in the supermarket in Singapore. And where do you get these grapes from? We buy Kyoho concentrate from Taiwan. And then we reprocess it over here into Kyoho grapes. Okay, so why do you do that? Why don't you just get the fruit full and start it from the beginning? Okay, uh, this is more for economical reason. Uh, one, if you buy the, the grapes, you need to use it, process it immediately, make it into a uh, juice drink. But as a concentrate, you buy it, you do not have to ship water, and you can keep it inside a frozen uh, warehouse until it's ready to be used. Besides saving costs and hassle, are concentrates beneficial in any other way? In general, if you dilute up with water concentrates, they are less likely to have nutrients intact as the fresh juice. But from a practical perspective, the major source of vitamins is vitamin C in fresh juices. And from the concentrate, you probably would have lost about 20 to 30% of the vitamin C. Are there any additives in our drinks? For us, we enrich it with vitamin C. Uh, we add uh, citric acid, which is the food acid commonly used in beverages. It's common to give us the sourness, the, 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 the sour taste, the freshness of the juices. Many of the fruit beverages found in supermarkets have additives such as preservatives and colouring to enhance the look and the taste of the product. But what do all these additives do to us? Some children are genetically predisposed to behavioural changes when exposed to food colouring. They may exhibit some behavioural changes. So it is recommended that they shouldn't be taking too much food colouring, preservatives, additives in general. Sugar is probably one of the most complex compounds you can find in your food. But when it comes to fruit juices and fruit drinks, it pays to know exactly what kinds of sugars are in it. So fructose is a naturally occurring sugar that you can find in fruit. But it often gets confused with high fructose corn syrup. And the not so sweet truth about that sweetener is that it's been linked to a raise in obesity and other health complications. High fructose corn syrup just contains a much higher concentration of fructose. It is used as an additive to many foods which the human body does not metabolize as well in contrast to glucose, natural sugar, which every cell in the body needs to survive. So a high fructose diet has been associated with a higher incidence of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and a rise in blood triglycerides. Thankfully, high fructose corn syrup is seldom used in fruit drinks. However, it's still advisable to keep a lookout for it. Sugar is a stranger to none. But how informed are we of sugar's effects on our teeth? You know, sugar is definitely can cause tooth decay. But besides sugar, there are a few other factors that play as well. There's the, the saliva, the quality and amount in the mouth. Also the bacteria, the germs in the mouth. And that will depend on how well we brush or floss. And also time, how long is the mouth or the teeth exposed to sugar. So if you do take sugar, uh, make sure you try to reduce the time exposure brush well and floss well and uh, generally you should be fine. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Do we have any idea how much sugar is in our everyday drinks? So I'm going to ask a few passers-by to have a look at three different drinks and tell me, do they have any idea how much sugar is in there? Let's see. Okay, so I'm with Winston and he's going to help me out today. I have three different drinks I want to show him. Come take a look. Winston, thanks for doing this. So I need your help, okay? I have a fruit drink, I have a soda, and I have a sports drink. Right. I need you to guess how many sugar cubes you think are in each one. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the sports drink. Final answer. Yeah. There is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cubes of sugar in this bottle. All right, thank God I don't drink that. Ah, good for you. A soda over there, what do you think? Thank you. Thank you. It's actually 11, 12, 13, 14, my friend. Oh. <laughs> We're going to move on to the last one. That's a fruit juice drink. Two cubes. Well, actually, it is. Three? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. 
All right, Winston, so which one of these drinks really surprised you? The juice. Why? It's supposed to be healthy, so the amount of sugar in there. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight, Jesse. Crazy. Crazy? <laughs> it's yeah. too much. <laughs> Not good, huh? That's quite surprising. I thought it was less than that. I kind of think a fruity drink meant to be quite good for you, but clearly it's no good for your teeth. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun. These people were cool. We got mixed reactions. Some of them were really shocked by just how much sugar is in each of these drinks. But I don't think they quite wrapped their heads around the orange fruit juice drink because they thought just because it's smaller, there's less sugar. But think about it. It's about half the size of the other drinks, so there's quite a bit in there. Here's a little tip. To find out just how much sugar there is in your drinks, look at the label, take the amount of sugar in grams and divide it by four. That should give you an estimate of how many teaspoons or cubes of sugar there are in your drink. Coming up, are you sipping your way to tooth decay? And the drink that's being hailed is the new superfood with less sugar than 100% fruit juice and naturally occurring electrolytes. Is this miracle of nature all that it's cracked up to be? Coconuts are one of the most versatile and healthy foods that Mother Nature has to offer. It's even been used as an IV drip in developing countries where medical saline isn't available. Coconut water has become a super drink because it is a drink that is almost sterile in nature. It has got a very rich source of potassium and modest amount of sodium. And most importantly, it is also an isotonic or close to isotonic drink that we can have especially during exercise bouts or where you have a lot of sweating. So coconut water compared to other juices got little or no vitamin C and therefore when it's canned, it's not going to lose any of the major attributes but actually it will retain most of the attributes which are potassium and sodium and the isotonic nature of the drinks. In fact, uh, drinking coconut water from a can is just as good as drinking from a fresh coconut. Known to balance our pH levels by reducing acidity in the body, and the only drink that's as good canned as it is fresh. Just be careful to check that it's 100% coconut water and that there are no added ingredients or sugar. But what about one of our favorite juices, orange? I love my orange juice and drinks just as much as the next guy, but orange juice tends to have higher acidity more than other fruit juices. So it's making me think, just how acidic is it? And what exactly are the long-term effects on my teeth and gums? As we all know, fruit juice can be quite acidic. In a very acidic environment, the enamel of the teeth, which is the hard layer on the outer surface of the teeth, can actually slowly soften and in fact can dissolve over time if there's a prolonged exposure to acid. I want to know just how acidic our juices are. And does that mean we should be drinking them less regularly? For pH level, we normally use the uh, number system to measure how acidic. Uh, when we see our patients, we usually do a saliva test. And generally, the pH level of saliva should be between 7 to 8, and because the pH of our blood is 7.5. On the table are four different types of orange juice. Orange cordial, fizzy orange drink, orange fruit drink, and fresh fruit juice. Using litmus papers, we will be given a clear idea of how acidic each of the drinks are. It was quite surprising for one of the tests. We didn't expect the uh, orange cordial drink to be as acidic as what we see here. In fact, it's almost as acidic as the uh, fizzy orange drink. Generally, we know that uh, fruit juice contains lots of vitamin C and that's definitely essential for health. But when it comes to having uh, orange juice, I think looking at today's result, I guess one has to be a bit more selective. So the best way to drink the fruit juice is you know, to drink it all at once. And after that, if you can, have a rinse. If not, then the other best way is to try to use a straw and to make sure that the juice doesn't linger in the mouth. Uh, we try not to brush for the first half an hour because immediately after exposure to acid, the tooth surface can be a bit soft. And if a patient brushes immediately after that, they can actually brush or erode away a thin layer of tooth structure and then it gets a bit sensitive. 
So for those of us that love our orange juice, we always talk about vitamin C and how it's loaded, but how much vitamin C is actually in our fruit drinks, okay? Today we're gonna test freshly squeezed orange juice, pasteurized orange juice, and your orange cordial. And with me is Wen Yuen from Singapore Polytechnic, who's gonna help us out today. Now, vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid. This is sort of a standardized term, right, in the science field, right? And today, what she's gonna be doing is she's gonna use a standardized approach and methodology to testing how much ascorbic acid is actually in our fruit juices right here. So what you see here is a blue dye, also known as DCPIP, all right? The standard formula we're gonna to use today is 0.221 milligrams of ascorbic acid will equate to one mil of this DCPIP, right? And that's the magic formula. That's how we're gonna find out how much vitamin C is in each of these drinks. By adding the blue dye to the drinks, we can measure the levels of vitamin C. The more dye needed to turn the juice pink, the higher the amount of vitamin C present. Results time! You might be surprised to find out that the orange cordial that we tested actually has quite a bit of vitamin C in it. For every 100 milligrams of cordial that we tested, we found 39 milligrams of vitamin C. Now with the pasteurized orange juice, it was a little bit less. We found 30 milligrams of vitamin C in there. But as with most things, fresher is always better. So with a freshly squeezed orange juice, we were able to squeeze 50 milligrams of vitamin C for every 100 ml of that drink. Now remember, if you're gonna have it, drink it quickly, because the longer you let it sit there, the faster the nutrients will disappear. Now I don't know what you prefer, call me old fashioned. I like my juice freshly squeezed. Okay guys, so it's not necessary to restrict fruit juices from your diet. Just try to have it with pulp, avoid the sugars, the additives, and all the other funny stuff. I'm gonna try and keep it balanced anyway. So here's to your health, drink away.